Hey everyone, welcome back to TK's Tech Talk. Today I'm going to compare two Dell Precision laptops. One is the 5540 and one is the 3541. Sorry about not being able to fit both the laptops in one screen, but it's because I don't have any professional camera equipment. I'm just using a Note 10 Plus to record. So unfortunately, it looks like this. But I'm going to start by showing you the difference in the footprint and then I can show you maybe one at a time so you can get a feel for each laptop. So in terms of size, if I put the 5540 on top of the 3541, you will see that there's not really much difference in the dimension. If it's exactly on top and you can barely see the 3541. Let's have a look at the ports on the side. So let's start with the front. Okay, you can see that even though the footprint is more or less the same, there's definitely a difference in thickness. Let's have a look at the back. And again, it's definitely a bit thicker. And let's start with the ports on the right hand side. So, for the 3541, we have a micro SD slot, a headphones and microphone jack, two USB super speed ports. This one has PowerShare, HDMI, and a full LAN port. There's also an option of having a WAN. Mine doesn't actually have WAN. You need to buy a card for that, a mini PCIe WAN card, or obviously if you're buying it from Dell, you can configure it at time of purchase. Uh, or you can also install a M.2 2242 PCIe SSD into that slot. For the 5540, we have a full-size SD card slot. We have a USB 3 with PowerShare, and we have a power indicator. If you press the button, you can see how much battery you have left. So that's definitely handy uh, if you're going out and you want to make sure you've got some charge. Let's go to the other side. Okay, so here we have the power connectors in both the laptops. On the 3541, we have a Thunderbolt 3 port, which also works with USB-C, and we have another super speed USB port. On the 5540, we have the smaller power connector. We have another super speed USB with PowerShare. We have a full HDMI port and Thunderbolt 3 port, which also backs up as USB-C and a headphone slash microphone jack. So you can clearly see that in terms of connectivity, the 3541 definitely has much better connectivity. The 3541 also has an option to have a smart card reader, which my model does have. So uh, let's have a look inside. So we'll start with the 3541. Uh, can't fit the whole thing in but hopefully you get the idea so let's have a look at the keyboard first so the keyboard has a little bit of flex to it as you can see uh, we have a dual pointing device with the stick and the touchpad with physical buttons and I really do prefer physical buttons I have a UK keyboard layout so if you have a US or something else the enter key may vary and it has a full numeric keypad and a power button and my model does not have the fingerprint scanner though there is an option to get the fingerprint scanner now the only thing is the keyboard is off center to the left and it is does take a little bit of getting used to um, it's not the best keyboard in the world but after a while you get used to it but if you do need a numeric keypad then this is definitely a model to consider because as you'll see in a moment the 5540 doesn't have that and if i just move up to the screen you can see that we have a camera which has a cover as well so it's handy to cover that up which is good for privacy and you do also get an option to buy the model with uh, the windows hello camera if you want to have that again something that is not available on the 5540 in terms of specification this model has a 1080p full hd matte screen it does not have a touch screen i think there's an option to get a touch screen on this uh, the SSD that came with it is an M.2 512 GB PCIe SSD and it has at the moment 32 gigs of RAM which is two 16 gig sticks 
and for anybody who's interested it does support 64 gigs of ram i have tested it and that's currently in my intel and uc9 which we can maybe look at in another video but it does support 64 gigs of ram if you want that and the good thing about this laptop is it actually has space for a normal 2.5 SATA drive as well. Now, when you buy the laptop, it doesn't come with the cable uh, that's required to do that. But I have actually bought that from, I think it was an Amazon UK, um, and I'm sure you can get it from AliExpress or eBay or something like that. And um, you can expand it, the storage, as much as you want. I've got a four terabyte Samsung Qvo 860 drive in there. I know it sounds a bit overkill, but I like to have all of my stuff with me all the time and I also like to have like um, a backup image of my laptop with me all the time just in case something goes wrong and I need to re-image. So, you know, that's just something maybe to think about. So, like I said, there are some differences. You do get the, the LAN port, you get more USB ports, you have a micro SD slot instead of the standard full-size SD on the 5540 and you do have a privacy cover for the camera and you can also have a Windows Hello option as well as the 4G. It sounds like a lot is missing in the 5540, but let's not forget that is a much slimmer, much nicer looking device. And this has a NVIDIA Quadro P600 graphics card, which is nowhere near the power of the T1000 from the 5540, but it will do the job for most people. If like me, you're not really doing hardcore graphics or editing or gaming or things like that. Okay, so let's move on to the 5540. And before I start talking about the design and the specs and the keyboard and things like that, I just wanna point out the SD card slot. You might have noticed that I actually had a, it looks silver on mine. The reason is because I actually have an, a micro SD adapter which fits flush inside. A little bit difficult to get out, but if you stick your fingernail in there and pull it out, you'll actually see that this is a base QI micro SD adapter and you can see the model number there in case you want to buy one for your laptop. So very handy because it allows you to have additional storage without having to worry about if you can stick another drive inside or if you have a small SSD as your primary drive, things like that. So let's open this one up. Okay, so let's start with the keyboard and the trackpad. And you can see that we have a trackpad only, no dual pointing device. We don't have physical buttons, I do prefer those, but this does give you more space for the trackpad. The keyboard is much better. I really like the precision keyboards. I have a precision 5530 for work and I love typing on it. It's, it's just an amazing keyboard to type on. It has hardly any flex. It's very clicky and very satisfying to type on. I have the fingerprint sensor already on this one, as you can see, and let's move on to the screen. So one amazing thing that Dell has finally done in the fourth iteration of the Dell Precision, it's been more or less exactly the same over the four years, except that the camera is now finally in the middle at the top, as opposed to down here on the 5530 or down here in the corner somewhere on the 5520 and the 5510. So in terms of specification, this one came with a 256 GB PCIe SSD, M.2 of course, and it has a smaller battery, which is the 56 watt hour four cell battery, as opposed to the 97 watt hour battery, which is also an option. However, if you go for the smaller battery, and if you're always gonna have a charger with you in your bag anyway, uh, you actually can add a secondary 2.5 SATA SSD, which I have done. So I have uh, again bought the cable, I think it was from eBay this time, uh, and I've attached a two terabyte SanDisk Ultra for secondary storage in addition to that small 256 SSD. And honestly, it's uh, like, and I've got the SD card as well. I know it sounds overkill, but I can use the SD card maybe to have a booting Windows in case I need it to re reinitiate my laptop. So it does have good storage options. If you, if you consider the form factor, it's very good for that. Uh, this one has the T1000 Quadro graphics card. I've played games on it. It does run quite nice actually. Maybe not as good as the XPS 15. And just to point out, this is almost exactly the same as the XPS 15 from 2019. Uh, only that that has a gaming graphics card and this has a business graphics card. 
Um, why am I talking about 2019 laptops in 2020? Well, like me, I'm sure all of you can't afford to go and buy brand new laptops. Both of my laptops are bought used. Um, and if the, the 2020 model is very nice, the XPS 15 is much smaller, much slimmer, much more sleek. But there again is a few things missing. Like you only have USB-C ports. You still get the same T1000 graphics card. So is it really worth the hefty price tag to buy a 2020 model or is it better to buy a refurbished 2019 model that will serve the purpose just as well and I'm, and these both have by the way i forgot to mention this mo this model has the 9850h i7 ninth gen processor and the 3541 has the 9750h both hex core uh, slightly different performance but you all notice that 9850h and 9750h are more or less the same the 9850h i think allows a v pro and some additional remote features things like that so i hope you enjoyed this video guys i'm more than happy to show you the internals how the hard drives are connected for both models the additional 2.5 hard drives that is uh, if you want to see how to upgrade the ram or see anything else inside please let me know and leave any comments in the in the comment section thank you for watching